Hello, students of Dynamics. This is Dr. Dan Baker with a example video talking about how we can use length equations to find the dependent motion in a system with two cables. Okay, so this is a pulley system, and I've already mapped it out here for you. Feel free to pause the video at any point you think is convenient to go ahead and draw out this system. But fundamentally, we have a ceiling, and from that ceiling hangs three fixed axis pulleys. Uh, additionally, we have two floating pulleys, okay, pulley E and pulley D. And what we want to resolve is basically the ratio of motion between point P over to point B. Okay, so that kind of maps out where we're headed. Now, just like on all these problems, we're going to create an axis system, and that axis system, the Usually the best axis system that we can use is going to go through the centers of these pulleys. Okay, so I'm going to draw a line right through here. Another one, this is offset just a touch, so I'll bring that through here. Uh, another one through E, and a final one here through D. Okay, so basically draw some axes through the center of each one of those pulleys. And then we need to establish some distances. Okay, so um, I'll do my distances on this problem. Uh, we'll pick red just because there's no other red in the picture. It'll show up well. So let's say the distance down here from that axis going through the middle of H. Let's call this the distance Y sub P. Okay, so Y being a Y distance, sub P being the distance down to block P. Next up, we could find a distance from the same axis down to this axis through the middle of E. And we're going to call that distance Y E. Ye being the distance down to the center of E. Uh, another distance between the center of I down to D. Call this Yd. And then we have one more distance. So we're going to map out the length of each segment of these two cables. One cable being drawn in blue, the other cable being drawn in brown. Is we also need a distance from E down to D. Okay, so this is actually the critical one on this problem. While we could give it a variable name, what we find is that we always want to measure distances from fixed points. Okay, so notice that these other three length vectors st start at fixed points, but E is not a fixed point, and the middle of D is not a fixed point either. So if we're going to express this as distances from fixed points, we need to express this as a difference of yd minus ye. Okay, once again, that's kind of a critical step. So just to put this into words, we can say to measure all distances away from fixed points. fixed points or fixed locations. And then if you have a distance that is not starting at a fixed location, then express it as terms which are from fixed locations, typically as a difference. So I'm gonna go ahead and write these equations corresponding in colors here. So we have the length of the brown cable will be equal to y sub p. Now there is going to be some distance over the top here. There'll also be a distance under the bottom here and additionally a distance over the top of G. Now I'm gonna lump all of those together. I'm gonna to call that um, my constant, I'll call it C1. Okay, so all of those non-changing distances, I'm lumping into that constant. So I have that down to Y sub P. Now, as I take a look, I have three cables here, this one, this one, and this one, which all have the same length, which all have YE. So we can say plus three times YE. And that actually is the end. Let's see here. So that goes over the top, one, two, three, and it ends back there at E. So that's it for that equation. Okay, YP plus three times YE. And then for the other one, we can say that, and let's go ahead and label that L1. So L2, the blue cable, is equal to, um, we'll start over here on this side of here. So we have this difference between YD and YE. And we're adding to that 
2 times yd, and we're adding our constant called this c2, which is going to be made up of the distance under the bottom of this one and the distance over the top of i. Okay. Once again, just lumping those constant values because when we take a time derivative of these two equations, all of those non-changing distances will go to zero. See my previous video if you still haven't dialed that in. So now we want to take a time derivative, so a d dt of both equations. And so when we take the time derivative of L1, that is going to give us a value of zero because L1 is a fixed length. Time derivatives of any constant number are equal to zero. All the y's will turn into velocities, okay? Because the velocity, you can put it over here, that velocity is equal to d, in this case, we often write it as a position vector dr dt, um, here, since it's vertical velocity, we'll say v sub y is equal to dy dt. Okay, so this is going to become the velocity of p plus three times the velocity of e. And then we're going to have a zero coming out of the derivative of that constant c1. Now switching over to blue, we have zero that's the time derivative of L2. This becomes the velocity of d minus the velocity of e. And adding to that, 2 times the velocity of d plus the derivative of constant C2 gives me a 0. So just kind of cleaning these terms up a little bit, getting rid of the zeros, we end up with... Um, now, I just was thinking there for a second because I was thinking about how I was going to rearrange this Brown equation. And what it really comes down to is you want to solve for the term that you don't want in your answer. Okay, In this problem, we're trying to resolve a ratio between the velocity of P and the velocity of B. Okay, So here's P. That's good. So we want to put basically E in terms of P. So let's set that up. So VE is equal to negative vp over 3. And then coming out, so that was from this equation here. Now let's put it here right next to it, in my blue equation. So here, once again, I want to find this ratio between um, between block b and p. Now one thing you might notice is there's no velocity of b yet, but we can notice that the center here at D down to B, that's a fixed distance. Okay, If I wanted to, I could call that C3. There's no change in that length no matter what happens in the system. So what we find is that our velocity at D is equal to the velocity at B. Okay, So I'm going to make that substitution as well. And so if I solve this equation again for VE, because then I'm going to set both these equations equal to one another, since they're both equal to VE. So VE is equal to 3 times VD. It's also equal to 3 times VB, because we know that D, VD and VB are equal to one another. So bringing these together, we find that negative vp over 3 is equal to 3 times vb. We were given a velocity of vp, so let's solve for vb. So we find that vb is equal to negative vp over 9. Okay, a 9 to 1 ratio given this pulley system. And so if VP is 1, we find that VB is equal to negative 1 ninth, and we said units of meters per second, so meters per second. Okay, so a 9 to 1 ratio between block B and block A. It turns out that each one of these pulleys uh, arranged in this fashion is a 3 to 1 pulley system, and you can kind of think of them being 
it's a three to one system in series, right? So the three to one is actually multiplying times the other three to one and ending up with a nine to one ratio between the motion of P to the motion of B. So I hope this was a useful uh, example using these length equations to find the ratio of the velocities. Note again that if you needed to find the ratio of the position, like the distance that B travels versus the distance that P travels, it's also going to be a 9 to 1 ratio. And that their acceleration, their linear vertical acceleration, is also going to be a 9 to 1 ratio. Okay, so once you find the ratio between either position, velocity, or acceleration, it's going to be the ratio of the other two as well. Hope you're having a great day.